Hey y'all, in this video I'm going to show you how to replace your starter gear on Briggs and Stratton starters. Now both of these are different, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, this is the easiest of the two. I prefer this setup. See this pin right here? It goes all the way through the other side. And all you do is knock it off, and the whole starter mechanism comes off, including the gear which is uh, easy. You can have one of these done in five minutes. Now the other type is a little more difficult because instead of the pin you got a snap ring here. And these can be a pain sometimes getting them off and putting them back on. In order to do this you need an eighth inch punch like this. This type of punch with the tapered end will not work. You have to use this type. Okay, you need a hammer too, obviously. Put your punch on there and hit it. Keep an eye on it. There it is. This is the pin here after you get it out. You see it's pretty small. Don't lose that because that's very important. Without this, you can't use the starter. To make things easier, if the starter has been sitting for a long time and this ain't been done, uh, put some WD-40 or PV blaster or some type of penetrating oil in here. That will help uh, let it set for a while and that will make it easier to knock out. Okay, now this comes off like this. And you got a washer and you just wind your starter gear off and here it is. Okay, you also probably noticed that this gear is still good. It's still got a lot of cranking left in it. I'm just doing a demonstration on how you'd replace it. Now this one here is a brand new one. Now if you look on there, you get it to focus, it says this side up. Notice how these teeth have like a, like a slant on the side, and these are just flat. That side always goes up, that way when it comes up, it can go into the flywheel gear better. Now I'm just going to put this old one back on because it's still good. And also to save a couple dollars on these, buy the aftermarket brand. The Briggs and Stratton and the aftermarket brand is the exact same thing, unless you want genuine Briggs parts. Okay, now make sure you get this right with the flat side down, and you just wind it on there like this. You put your washer on, you put this on. Now you got to line up the pin. Okay, I don't know how well you can see this, but you got to line up the hole in the piece of plastic with the hole in the, the shaft on the starter. So get that lined up and get your pin and line it up get it started with the hammer and when it gets down like that get your punch again and pound it all the way and just drive it down until it's pretty much flush with the plastic or try to even it up and see they're just it's a little bit counter sunk on this side. It's not that big a deal. Now your starter is ready to go. Now I'm going to show you what to do on the other type. Okay, what I do, I generally just try to pry it off, bend it up. <laughs> now if you got patience, you might want to try to get two screwdrivers and pop it off. You can see I got it almost halfway off. Just keep prying with it all the way around. Sorry if I get in your way here. Also, watch your fingers when doing this. It's easy to stab yourself just like that. There it is. And I just shot across the garage. Also, wear uh, safety glasses when doing this because uh, you don't want one of them in your eye. Now, after you get that out, take this off. You got a washer. It's in there. There's a little, oops, sorry, sorry, yeah. There's your washer there, then you got your, your gear just comes right off. Now, this is the same as the other one. This gear is still good, so we're just going to put it right back on. But just pretend like I replaced it. You put that on like that. Your spring is down here. Your washer plate goes back on. Now the fun part. 
Okay, right here's a close-up of the C-clip, C-ring. I call them snap rings, but they're actually called C-rings. Uh, these things are a pain. Like I said, be sure you wear safety glasses when you work with these, if you use the techniques I'm doing. Uh, I think they actually make a tool to put these on and take them off with. I don't have one because I'm doing it the, the hard way. But also have a couple of them on, on hand, too, because like you've seen in the video, mine shot across the garage here. Okay, you want to pull this back. It's probably going to be hard for you all to see this. You get your clip on here like this. And what I do, which I don't think I'll be able to show you on camera, is uh, once you get it lined up on the, the groove, just put it on here. You get a pair of pliers or needle nose and just pull it down on there. It's not easy. And I don't like these that well. Yeah, if you can see that. Just get it in the groove. And... Okay, guys, I just came up with my own technique to do this. Put a little dab of grease on there and set it on there so that the grease holds it in place. And with a pair of pliers, oops, see how it's got that round part on there? Get that on here like this, and it goes right on. Then, once it gets halfway on like that, take these, and crimp it on there the rest of the way. There it is. Now we're going to fix that hanging up like it. Just suck it all down with WD-40. Still hangs up just a little bit. Time it gets work, worked in, it'll work better. Spring might be a little weak on it. That's yeah, working better now. Yep, there it is. And we'll do the same on this one, even though it don't hang up. That was working better. Well, I hope this video helped you all. If you got any questions, leave me a comment or send me a message, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I appreciate you all watching this, guys, and thanks to all my subscribers for subscribing and checking out all my videos. We'll catch you all later.